I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine Let it shine Let it shine Everywhere I go I'm gonna let it shine Everywhere I go Missionary Baptist Church where the word goes forth we have excellent teachers and we learn and grow the things of God not only are we here to hear the word but with the teaching and the preaching that we have they expect us to be a doer of the word which is a good sign so enjoy yourself excellent teaching excellent music and uh, we just want to let everyone know that this is a night that we praise and worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to start you guys off with one of my scriptures uh, that I enjoy a lot. It says, um, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, mm -hmm. the evidence of things not seen. Yes. And then I love going to this one. It says, But without faith, mm -hmm. it is impossible to please God. Yes. yes. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Hmm. And must he is, what? Must what believe. Mean? Must believe. Yeah. That he is. Amen. Not only that, he says, and you must be, he, he will be a rewarder. Rewarder yes. of them that diligently seek him. Yes. Now, to me, if you believe that God was the creator, mm -hmm. and God is almighty, all powerful, and he's giving you a scripture that says, he that believes in me must believe that he is a rewarder. Yes. So what is that telling you? Yes. God said, go ahead. Try me, said the Lord of hosts. Yes. And see when I pour out a blessing from yes. heaven. Yes. There will not be Reuben enough to receive. Amen. Amen. And if, I, if I, that's me, I'm going for it. Amen. <laughs> and it's because of that, <laughs> you know, me and Joy have been blessed because of the scriptures. Yes. And because of the scriptures. And we try and we apply that. And so anyway, um, welcome and enjoy. You know Pastor Pastor Ron Brown, he brings he brings the word. Amen. He really does. And that's why everybody's growing and learning. And also, uh, we're going to do some prayer requests for certain people and everything else. So, uh, so now um, we're going to start off with prayer requests. Amen. Oh, okay, go ahead, Sean. Yeah, me. I read the scripture. I read the scripture. Yeah. Oh, yes. oh, that's just scripture. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. Let's go. My bad. Okay. Amen. All right. Let's see, let's get this. Get all the, the prayer requests. I just wanted to thank God that we you know we prayed for my sister because she has that lump lumpectomy done and she she got the result. It was benign. Amen. So there was two uh, pathologists that read it and they said it's both benign. So we praise God for that. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. She was concerned. She's my youngest sister. Amen. In the Philippines. And when we heard about that, we had people come together and just really pray. Amen. And prayer works. Amen. And that's why. Yes, does. That's why I forsake not to assemble together. Yes. Because when people come together. Yes. And do what God says to do, you'll see it works. Yes. Amen. And that's what He's saying. Come out and work. All right. And so. Um, Who else? Huh? You need to ask some more people. Who else? Request. Oh yes. Yeah. Well, let us know your request. Prayer request. Amen. Bring it to us. I'm going to continue to pray for my mother, Gussie Jones. Yes, ma'am. Uh, she's doing real well. Oh, right. Let's continue to pray All right, for good, very good. Amen. Sister Burns. Uh, <laughs> let's pray for LeJay. He started school on Monday. All righty. Yeah. Um, and just continue to pray for me that I grow stronger in the Lord. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. How's that girl doing? She's doing just fine. Thank All right. Amen. Yes, sir. We will continue to pray. 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 Yeah, put her on the list. This is wife, so continue to pray. Just ask this prayer for new life as a whole, as a body. Yes, ma'am. Not only for new life, for all churches that are open up and dynamic. Amen. 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 And I want to lift up uh, Evangelist Dr. Dottie Ford. Yes, sir. Uh, Deacon Fielder, who's uh, yes, not feeling too good this evening. And, uh, yes, sir. Deacon is Fielder. Yes, sir. And uh, all my family uh, in Lubbock and Dallas, 
Fort Worth area, uh, Atlanta, and all my family. Yes. Um, and my children as well, and my grandchildren. All right. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. So we'll, we'll take this to the Lord. Yes, ma'am. Um, we are just asking prayer for myself and for my husband. We, my sewing room got kind of flooded, oh, so wow. I heard about it's that. been a little stressful having to get all that fixed and yes, carpeting pulled up and all that. But you know, little by little, and I always make sure I'm down on my knees. <coughs> I was telling, I told Pastor Brown that. My knees are getting a good workout, not just being on my knees for cleaning, but on my knees for praying. Yeah. <laughs> and when it's working, yeah. Yeah. All right, well, yeah, I will take these for every request to the Lord, and then after that, um, uh, Veronica, if you're gonna, if you'll sing a song when we get done. Just continue up this little line. Okay, sure. Get the word. That's what we really are here for. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Father God, we are grateful and thankful for this opportunity we have. So when two or more are gathered, you're in the midst. And it's nice to know that we believe it, we trust in you, and we honor and glorify you. We are grateful and thankful for all the things you have done. We thank you for having not only one pastor, but two here tonight. We are so blessed. We are so fortunate. And they love your word, and they know their word, and they teach it. And that's why we are growing in your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And for everyone here tonight, Father, that are going through, going through things, whether it's sickness or anything else, that's why we come together. We bring them all to you. Uh, we ask you, Father, to hear our prayers and to heal them like you always do. <laughs> we are grateful and thankful that we have such a wonderful church with a diversity of people because they love you. And they just want to come and get the understanding and the wisdom and the knowledge so they can be a doer of your word and be blessed and be praised. We give you all the praise, glory, and thanks, Father, for all the things you've done, continue to do. And we ask it all in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and all God's people said. Amen. 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 Shine, shine, shine. I'm going to let it shine. Shine, shine, shine. Studying His Word prepares us for what's going what's going on in life today. But it also studying and understanding the Word it allows the Word to get in us, so we all can be living epistles. Amen. 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 Now we concluded chapter seven uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we're going to get into chapter eight. Uh, in chapter 7, as you all recall, was what, a parenthetical or was a parenthesis? It was, it was a pause somewhat in action. It was John going into further details of the things in chapter 6 and some, uh, in the first six seals and then some of the seventh seal. Amen? Amen. Now we're in chapter 8, where the seventh seal will be open. Amen? Amen. And also let me say that the great tribulation. The last three and a half years of the tribulation period is divided into four series. Each of these series describes seven pieces. Okay, follow me if you can. And the seven seals in the book are like an umbrella over the entire period. And these seven seals we know is what, the seven years, all right? So the first six seals will be open right after each other and the judgments will come out however between the sixth and seventh seal as well as between the sixth and seventh trumpet 
there's a pause. And John either explains something or answer specific questions. Okay? Then within the seventh seal, judgment is announced with seven trumpets. Okay? And the same pattern follows as the six trumpets are sound. A pause, then within the seventh trumpet, seven bowls or vows of wrath are introduced. Okay? Now the entire process fits within the seven seat, the, the seals. Amen. And the seventh thing John describes always opens the door to the next series, which includes seven things. Amen. And this connects each of the series. The seven seals, the seven trumpets, the seven personalities, we're going to say, and the seven bowls or vows of wrath are all about the same period, but from a little different angle, okay? And sometimes we'll see the scene from heaven, but most of this happens on earth. In a very orderly way, it unfolds like this. The six seals all, the six seals all open and reveal themselves in Revelation 6, chapter 6, verse 7. The seventh seal introduces the blowing of the seven trumpets, Revelation chapter 8, verse, uh, chapter 8 through chapter 11. The blowing of the seventh trumpet introduces seven surprising people or characters in Revelation chapter 12 to verse, uh, chapter 13. The beast out of the sea introduces the seven bowls of vows or wrath in Revelation chapter 15 through Revelation chapter 16. And the last bowl of wrath brings to, brings to us the judgment of Babylon. And that brings to an end the great tribulation period in Revelation chapter 17 through chapter 18. And then Christ returns to earth to set up his kingdom during the millennium period, the millennium period all right? And something to note here, remember the Tower of Babel in Genesis chapter 11? Yes, sir. Now, this was the first organized rebellion against God that happened in Babylon. And they were judged by it. Y'all remember that story, amen? Mm -hmm. Babylon also represents the last rebellion against God, both religiously in Revelation chapter 17 and politically in Revelation chapter 18. Babylon receives the first and last judgments, okay? And this brings to an end wicked men day on this earth. And this whole overarching account is important to remember that Jesus is directing everything now. He's the only one worthy to open this book, and this is the revelation, the unveiling of him. He is no longer the teacher walking the shores of Galilee or the inspector walking among the lampstands. Neither is he the high priest standing as intercessor. Now he is the executioner of God's will on the earth as he opens the seals of the book. All the judgments of the great tribulations from, flow from out of, uh, out of the seals. And out of the seals come the trumpets, out of the trumpets come the cast of characters, and out of the cast of characters come the bowls of vows of wrath. Christ directs the entire operation from heaven. Amen? Now, this judgment on earth will take place at the Lord's command. The church will be delivered from this period of judgment because what? The church has been saved by the grace of God, and we are now, at this time, will be raptured. And only those who reject the grace of God go into the great tribulation period. And when they make their decision to refuse God's grace offered them in Jesus Christ, they choose to be judged by the Lord Jesus Christ instead. We all got that? I know it's a lot of information. Y'all got that? Any questions? Anything you would like to add, Pastor Emeritus? This question. Mm -hmm. Like the silence for half an hour. Yeah, don't get that. Uh -huh, oh, okay. No, go Just, ahead. Okay. You want to wait till we get there? Yeah, okay. Okay. So let us go to Revelation chapter 8, verse 1. We all there? Yes, sir. Okay. And let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your most beautiful name. Father, we just pray that you bless us with the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word. 
and that you open our minds, body, and soul to the wondrous ways of your law. Giving you all the praises, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now in verse 1 of chapter 8 it says, And when he, he being Jesus, had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour. Now when the seventh seal is lifted, the scroll is finally opened. And this takes us back to Revelation chapter 5, verse 1, where it says, And I saw in the right hand of him, and that him being him, that sat on the throne, a book written within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. So we know Jesus has this book in his hand, all right? Now the contents of the seven can now be released. The contents of the seven seal now can be released. And remember, the first six seals was man cruelty upon the earth that God allowed, okay? But now the seventh seal is God's wrath upon the earth. And then it says, there was silence in heaven about the space of it half an hour. Yeah. Go ahead. When you say, use that, how do we use that to, I mean, when we say space of an half an hour, we use, what, what does that actually mean? Okay, I'm going to go to some scriptures. Uh, let me, Joy, did you have a question? You had... No, I was just wondering why the after you reading from chapter seven, where mm. for the Lamb was in the midst of the throne, shall feed them and shall lead them unto the living fountain of water, and God shall wipe away with tears in the eyes. And also when they transition into this uh, seventh seal, uh -huh. it was before it was open, and when he had opened, then there was silence. So there's yes. something special about this seventh seal. Okay. Just hit the nail on the head. So, so, so we know the first six seals are what? Yeah. It was judgment, but it was man's cruelty upon the earth. Yeah. The seventh seal is God's wrath mm -hmm. upon the earth. Okay? So there was a silence in heaven about the space of a half hour. And this echoes Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 7, which says, Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. God's judgment is about to be pronounced. Okay? And this implies that God's wrath begins with the trumpet judgment and the opening of the seventh seal. Okay? Go to Reve Let's read Revelation chapter 6. I'll read it. Uh, verses 12 through 17. Revelation 6 verses 12 through 17 says, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, that being Jesus, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell upon the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the let me see, and the heavens depart, the heaven departed as a scroll, when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? This ushers in the opening of the seventh seal. You understand that? So what is said here, what, what John is describing here is ushering in God's judgment. Okay? Now the half hour of silence appears to serve as a literary break or a very brief period from the action before everything moves full speed ahead toward the final judgment. Okay? So it's just a, a break. And then God's, then God, God's is fin uh, Jesus is finna announce it. And the trumpets are about to blow. Okay? So, and let me say, this is the final judgment. The seventh seal. The seven trumpets and the seven bowls of wrath. Now in the prior verses of Revelation, heaven is seen to be a glorious and worshipful place with praising and singing. Trumpets blaring, celestial beings crying out, but suddenly there comes this silence. Okay? 
as horrible as the sealed judgments were, the trumpet judgments will be a lot worse. Okay, so we got the people in heaven sitting there waiting. Okay, what's going to happen? So it's almost like an expectation. Yeah, it's, it's, expectation. it's like, it's, it's almost like, let me put it this way. If we're watching a movie and we follow the movie and some, a scene is about to happen, but there's a break, a pause, then it happens. It's kind of like that. Because remember, they don't know what's going to, what's going to happen upon the earth. Nobody in heaven knows what's going to happen upon the earth until the seventh seal is broken. Okay? Only God knows. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now in verse 2 it says, And I, John, saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Now there is a quite, quite a few numbers now let me say, there's a quite a few, a few numbers and signs in the book of Revelation. Amen? And we know the number seven represents what? Completion. Completion. And it goes right along with this, this being the final judgment of God unto the earth. Okay? And the seven trumpets. These trumpets are of greater intensity than the seals, but not as destructive as the final vow or bold judgment that we see in chapter 6 of Revelation, verses 17 through 21. Let's go there. Revelation chapter 16, verses 17 through 21. And need a reader. Revelation chapter 16, verses 17 through 21. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake, and so great. And the city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God, to give unto her the cup of wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail. For the plague thereof was exceeding great. And this tells me man is who's going to be on this earth when I say man, I'm telling men, women, boys, and girls are going to see a rap that has never seen, been seen before. And here's the thing. They cannot die. They're going to have to suffer this. They're going to have to suffer everything this rap that God is putting on this earth. Okay? Now, and let me say, this will occur during the final three and a half years, the Great Tribulation period. All right? And accept the effects. And then, but the time is indefinite. Okay? Except the effects of the fifth trumpet, uh, fifth trumpet judgment, which will last five months, according to Revelations chapter 9, verse 10. Let's go there. So it's no specific time how long this rap is going to take place. Well, we know it's going to be the last three and a half years of the Great Tribulation period. Only here in Revelations 9 and 10, it tells us. The fifth trumpet judgment would last five months. And it reads, And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their powers was to hurt men for five months. And this is what came out of the abyss, the bottomless pit, these scorpions with these tails. Now, the first four trumpets announced the divine destruction of earth in verses 6 through 12 in Revelation chapter 8, while the final three trumpets involve demonic devastation of earth's inhabitants in Revelation chapter 9, verses 1 through 21. And these seven trumpets are what we what are what 
is what would literally take place on earth. This is not symbolic. This is going to take place. And these angels are prepared to carry out God's order. Also, these seven trumpets were to sound the alarm. These trumpets are loud and they send out a clear note. And there will be no question of the message. The trumpet throughout the Bible is used for two specific purposes. First is to, to assemble the people for worship. And second, to assemble the people for war. Okay? And as the seventh seal is broken, the seven angels receive trumpets. Okay? And the opening of the seventh seal does not cause the seven angels to stand before God. Apparently, they are always there waiting, awaiting a special assignment from the Creator. And the opening of the seals results in each one being given a trumpet that will be blown in proper sequence and introducing a future form of God's judgment. And in the first three and a half year period of the tribulation, the earth was, has known the wrath of the Antichrist. Okay? But the last three and a half years, the earth will begin to feel the wrath of God Almighty. Okay? And verse 3, any questions so far? And in verse 3, it says, And another angel, and I want y'all to, when we read scriptures, really pay attention to things. Because it says, another angel, and I'll, and I'll tell you why I'm pointing this out, came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. Now a golden censer was a golden pan suspended on a rope or chain that was used to transport fiery coals from the brazen altar to the altar of incense. In order to, to ignite the incense, symbolizing the prayers of the people. And to prove this, turn to Psalms 141. Psalms chapter 141. Verses 1 through 2. Psalms chapter 141, verses 1 through 2. Lord, I cry unto thee, make haste unto me. Give ear unto the, my voice when I cry unto thee. Let my prayer be set before thee as an incense. Say that again. Incense. Say it again. Read that over. Okay. Let my prayer be set before thee as infant, and the lifting of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Amen. Go to Luke chapter 1, verses 8 through 9. Luke chapter 1, verses 8 through 9. Luke chapter 1, verses mm -hmm. 8 and 9. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Amen. Now go to Revelation 5 and 8. show you that this, this is talking about the uh, this, this incense uh, symbolizing the prayers of the people of the saints. Anybody get it? Revelation chapter 5 verse 8. Go ahead, Sister Collins. Chapter 5 verse 8. Mm -hmm. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the heart no, fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Amen. And let me say, this occurred twice daily at the time of the morning and even 
evening sacrifices. Verse 3 tells us this angel stands before the heavenly golden altar of incense, which is before the throne of the Almighty God. And the prayers of, of all the believers are mingled with heavenly incense and offered up to God. Now these prayers contain the, mar the martyrs and the suffering saints' cries for relief and justice. The answer to these prayers is the seven trumpets and the seven golden vows. Okay? And we must realize that the tabernacle in the wilderness, remember when they were uh, in the book of Exodus, was a miniature of the arrangement in heaven. The altar constructed by Moses for Israel's tabernacle was copied from this one in heaven. When Jesus died on the cross as our sacrificial lamb, his blood had to be carried to the mercy seat in heaven. Just as the lamb in the temple had his blood sprinkled on the mercy seat in the most holy place. So the very throne of God is the most holy place in heaven. And Jesus is our high priest forever who intercedes for us at the throne of God. But let me say that this another angel is not Jesus Christ. Because you will read commentary and they will say, this has got to be Jesus. No, it is not Jesus. And here's why. John would have recognized Jesus as the one offering these prayers. Amen? Mm -hmm. And if you read the book of Revelation in which John authored, what does John refer to Jesus most of the time as? The Lamb of God. Amen? So that's why we have to pay real close attention to Scripture because the answers are right there in front of us despite what some commentaries may say. This, this Another angel is not Jesus Christ. It is exactly that, another angel. Amen? Go ahead, babe. Can we say that these angels are, are something special? Because I kind of, I guess I'm going back to uh, verse 2, and I saw the seven angels who stood before God. We know that angels have always, God has always instructed them, but something special about these seven angels. And that, and that, and, and it could be, it could be, um, go ahead, Pastor. Well, they can be the same as messengers. Yes. He's sent out to do a task. Exactly. Because that's what I'm trying to reiterate here. We have to be careful because the scripture just says seven angels. It doesn't say archangels. It don't. It just says seven angels. I guess it's, I took, well, like you said, we should speculate. But I guess I'm, I'm just trying to say, is, 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 is there something special about these Well, they finna do something. I guess we could say they finna do something special. Amen. They're going to carry out the wrath of God by blowing these, these trumpets at Jesus' uh, command. But we also, like I said, seven represent the number of completion, which means this is the final judgment. And that's what I see in the seven angels. This is God's final judgment upon the earth. Now, like I said, the scripture doesn't say anything special about these angels, but we know angels are special because they minister to spirits. They carry out God's bidding and carry out what God's called them to do or has directed or commanded them to do. But we know it's seven angels standing before God, and we'll see in the latter verses, these seven angels are the ones that are going to be blowing the trumpets. But it's also vital to realize that the golden altar, and I want to point out something here, much incense and a golden censer reminds us of the Old Testament worship. Another proof that attention is centered on Israel and not the church age. Okay? Jesus is invoking the judgments of God on the oppressors of the remnant of Israel. Okay? A lot of people can't wrap their head around it. A lot of people think Revelation is talking about the church, but it's not talking about the church. The church is gone. And in Revelation chapter 2, chapter 2 and verse through verse 3, it is talking about churches, but it's talking about churches back then. It's talking about church age. As the church progressed, everything that happened in the first century church is happening in this century church. Those things were to point out the flaws that was going on in the church. But those same flaws are going on in the church today. But when we leave, when we leave chapter 2 and 3, then we go into John strictly talking about the Jews. And when I say that, the things that are going to come upon the Jews. Okay? Because... 
Jesus is giving him the instructions. But the terminology throughout Revelation points right back to the, to the nation of Israel. Okay? Any questions? Uh, uh, can I just add to one thing? Mm -hmm. She was asking about these angels. Uh -huh. You know, they position. And I had mentioned the word that they are messenger. Uh -huh. But they, and since they, they are really, uh, and they are messenger or angels of wrath. Yes. Okay. Amen. So that is, they are in a sense, special. a special task. They have a special right. Amen. And they have a special task because they're going to blow these trumpets and these judgments are going to go out. Jesus is going to give the command and they're going to give the instructions. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yes. By the, by the blowing of the trumpets. Very dramatic. His, his wrath is very dramatic because I'm going to even go back to verse 1 where they say everything just stopped. Yeah. So we know in heaven what are they doing? They're singing and worship and praying. That's all going to stop. So this is a very dramatic thing. That yeah, it's, it's, gonna it's going to be the, the one of the worst things that ever... This is worse than the flood. Yeah. This is worse than the flood. Uh, Pastor, uh, let me just mention, uh, since you went back to one, mm -hmm. I think it's a good idea to look at Zach, Zechariah, mm -hmm. uh, chapter 2, verse 13. And also make a note of in Ezekiel. Chapter 7, verse 8 and 9. Zechariah 2? Uh -huh. what's, what's the verses? 13. Be silent, O all flesh, before the Lord, for he is raised up out of his holy habitation. This is talking about this judgment here. And what's the other one? Uh, Ezekiel, uh, chapter 7, verse 8 and 9. Ezekiel 7, <clears throat> verses 8 and 9. That might help. Uh, with this silence. Okay. You know, I don't know, but it might uh, help with the silence. Now will I surely pour out my fury upon thee and accomplish my anger upon thee, and I will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense thee for all thy abominations. And my eyes shall not spare, neither will I pity, have pity. I will recompense thee according to thy ways, and thy have uh, abominations that are in the midst of thee and they and ye shall know that I am the Lord that smite and that all reiterates that this pause in space this half an hour something is going to happen something great and what's going to happen is God's judgment amen we understand that right there's a pause in the action because something is going to happen there's a saying there's always a quiet before the storm. And this you can look at it that way. It's a, it's a moment of silence before the storm. Amen? Okay. <clears throat> Anything else? Now verse 4 says, And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. So the Bible speaks of this as a sweet-smelling flavor. Go to Ezra, chapter 6, verse 10. Ezra, chapter 6, verse 10. And it says that, it says that they may offer sacrifices of sweet savor unto the Lord of heaven and pray for the life of the king and his sons. So, so the prayers in, 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 of the saints are sweet is a sweet smelling savor of the God, of God. Okay, and why are the prayers of the saints are sweet smelling savor? Anybody? I'm just I'm just throwing something out. I mean, what do you think? Why is the prayers of the saints a sweet smelling savor to, to the Lord? Anybody? Well, let me say, well, I believe it shows God that we're totally dependent upon him in our prayers. And it also shows, also shows that we trust him to make the right decisions for us. But, you know, a lot of people say, and I always go back to this Benjamin Franklin quote, God what is it? God, what, I forgot the quote. God 
was the quote. Uh, God take care of those who take care of themselves. Is that the quote? Did Benjamin Franklin say that? Yeah, Benjamin Franklin said that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Benjamin Franklin said, God take care of those who take care of themselves. Is that right? That's right, right? Yeah, something similar to that. Something similar to that. Yeah. yeah, but God has said in his word time and time and time again that he wants us to be totally dependent upon him. Amen. So when we pray to God for a petition, requests, supplications, it's showing God that we depend on him and him only. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's a sweet smelling savor. Because it shows that we know he will make the right decision for us. Yes. And not only that, but it also shows that we trust him and trust him only. Amen? Okay. Now the angel, this angel, was the messenger who carried the prayers. This speaks to prayers rising to God in heaven. The idea is that just as incense is precious, pleasant and drifts to heaven, so do our prayers. Amen? Amen. So I have a question. So because it seems to me that at the end, the culmination of the prayer of everybody I'm just saying that God has put it just like he's in one who put it, uh, tears in a bottle. Uh -huh. I'm just also saying that he, the prayers of the people that come, you know, has uh, brings to call the culmination where he has received all these prayers that the saints have that were being persecuted. The Everybody Amen. for everything. And then at the end, it seems like he's, okay, all of these come up. The heaven, and I'm now because it's just like a revenge now. Yeah. He is going to be doing this for the saints that have, you know, been uh, persecuted for his sake and everybody. Because, you know, now we're like, we always pray and we think that God help us, you know, with all the evil that we have in this world. And right. it seems like they're triumph, but then in the end, God is putting it. That's just my. No, no, because here's it. the thing it's showing. <clears throat> And now, now it's like, okay, bring all these prayers. And now it's like, I'm going to revenge all of these prayers. Of exactly. So what it's showing that God is going to answer these prayers. Amen. That's what it's showing. Yes. That God is about to answer these prayers through the seven seal, the seven trumpets, and the seven bowls of judgment. Mm -hmm. So these are the, he's about to show I'm going to answer these prayers. So, you, so you're right. So, and, that, and we know when you burn incense, what? The smoke floats up. Yeah. Amen. So this is, this is the prayers of the saints, the martyrs, the ones who's crying out during this tribulation period. God, come help us. And he's going to answer their prayers. Yeah, it's just all, you know. And it says all, but the church is gone. Uh -huh. So there's no, the church is not praying. So it's those who are going through, who's going through the tribulation period. And in particular, the remnant of Israel. So here, before anything happens at the opening of the seventh seal, then check this out. So this happens right before that seal is open. Yes. The prayers of God's chosen people come before the Lord God. Yes. Wow. That was that came first. That's what I'm saying. That yes, exactly. First. That's exactly what you're saying. Amen. Now in verse five, it says, "And the angel took the censer." And check this out, y'all. And filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Now the thunderings and the lightnings, the thunder claps, lightning and earthquake are the result of the fire from the altar thrown unto the earth. I'm sorry, that's Revelations 8 and 5. Now, this is indicating that the action of heaven initiates a responsive action on earth. Okay? And as the prayer for the saints for vengeance are taken from the altar, there are frightening sounds, flashes of light, and an earthquake on the earth, introducing the fact that the seven angels are about to sound their trumpets. Mm -hmm. 
okay? So fire from the altar of burnt offering means that God accepted the prayers of the saints, and this fire taken from the altar and cast to the earth is the fury or wrath or judgment of God, okay? Because our God is what? A consuming fire, okay? God is angry with sin. He's angry with the ones who have not came to faith in Jesus Christ. And he has decided it's time to punish those on earth who have rejected his son as their savior. Yes. Okay? Just as God finally destroyed Solomon and Gomorrah when they would not repent, there's a time when the fire of God would descend upon this earth in punishment. Okay? People say this is figuratively, but no, this is literally going to happen. Mm -hmm. Now, an earthquake. Now, surely of equal or greater intensity than the one described in the sixth seal in chapter 6, verse 12 of Revelation. And it says there, And I beheld, when he had opened the book, the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. Now, throughout the Bible, all of these natural disasters mentioned here in verse 5, thundering, lightnings, earthquake, is God dealing with mankind. Okay? Now, you can believe in global warming if you want to. Okay? But I believe it is God dealing with mankind on this earth. Okay? Because despite what the people of this earth would believe, Scripture says God is in control. Amen? Satan may be the God of the systems of this world, but God is the God, the creator of the earth. Amen? However, let me say this. Because of Adam and Eve's sin, which allowed sin to enter this earth, and because of their disobedience, natural disasters have, become, have come upon this earth, and God has allowed those things to happen. And let me say, Adam and Eve might have brought it into the world, but people on this earth today and throughout generations kept in the line of, with Adam and Eve, which means they kept it, sin going on in the world, if that makes sense. Sin, the things that we see today, the hurricanes in, in, uh, in New Orleans, in Louisiana, in that area, is because of man's sin. Amen? We understand that, right? Because we have to remember that Adam and Eve, when they walked with God, it was nothing they ever needed. Mm -hmm. Amen? Everything was beautiful in the garden until she was deceived and Adam flat out sinned. Mm -hmm. That's what allowed all the things that we see on the earth take place. And a lot of people say, well, why God allow that to happen to this little baby? God, it happened because a mother, mother Eve and Father Adam. Amen. That's why it happened. Now, and also let me say that this terrible storm in this verse takes place above ground as well as below ground. Okay? And the wrath of God has begun as the world enters into the great tribulation period. God is, is, God is a God of love, but he hates sin more than anything else. Okay? And because the reason he hates sin, because when you are a sinner, you cannot commune with God. God loves us so much, he wants to be in a relationship with us. But we have to go to him on his terms and not our terms. Okay? And also say now are the trumpet judgment, let me ask you now, are the trumpet judgment literal judgments? And the best way to decide if the trump, trumpet judgments are literal or symbolic is to study them in connection with the plagues of Egypt in Exodus chapter 7 up to chapter 11. Okay? Now, the five of, five of the plagues of Egypt are repeated in the book of Revelation. Anybody knew that? Go to Revelation chapter 6. I mean, chapter 16, I'm sorry. Revelation chapter 16. And the first plague that we see that's happened in Revelation, that, that's happening in the book of Revelation, that happened in the book of, uh, that happened to uh, the book in Exodus, 
is found in verse 2 where it says, And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a newsome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast. And we know that happened in Exodus. Right? The boils. Amen? Now, Revelation 16 and 4, 4 says, And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of water, and they became blood. We know about the blood. Amen? Revelation 16 and 13 says, And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. We know there were frogs in Egypt, in the book of Exodus. Revelation chapter 16, verse 21 says, And there fell upon the men a great hail out of heaven. And we know hell took place in the book of Exodus, and it was a plague that was pronounced upon Egypt. And the last one, go to Revelation 9. And verse 3. And the fifth plague was locusts. Right? Mm -hmm. And verse 3 of chapter 9 says, And there came out of the smoke locusts mm -hmm. upon the earth, and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power, had power. So no one suggests that what happened in Egypt was not literal in its form of judgment of the rebellious Egyptians. Amen? Therefore, we can conclude that the same thing applies during the tribulation period and the trumpet judgment introduced physical judgment on the earth. Okay? And our last verse for this evening, verse 6, says, And the seven angels, which had seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. So we read in verse 2 of the seven angels that have been waiting orders to move. And here in verse 6, they are arranging themselves in the order in which they were to sound their trumpets. The way is, the way is now prepared for the sounding of the trumpets and for the fearful commotions and changes which would be indicated by the trumpets. And the last seal is open. Heaven stands in suspense. And we know they're in suspense because they mentioned what that half hour of space? To know what is to be disclosed. And the prayers of the saints have been altered, I mean offered, and the censers of coals have been cast to the earth. And that's what? That's a symbol of judgment. As if there, and as if these judgments could no longer be held back from God, and prayers are about to be answered, and the angels prepare to sound the trumpets, indicative of what is to occur. Amen. So that's the introduction into the seven seal, which is going to be, and we said in that seven seal we're going to have seven trumpets. And within the seven trumpets, we're going to have seven vows of judgment or God's wrath. So we have to see here, God is, is fin let's put it this way, hell is about to come upon earth. Amen. People think we have it hard right now with this COVID-19 and everything now, but it ain't going to be nothing compared to what God's going to bring upon this earth. And I thank God that we, those who have come to faith in Jesus Christ, won't be here to see you. I don't even want to see it from heaven. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Because yeah. when I get there, all I want to do is be up under my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, but the thing is, is that that's why we have a reason to praise God. That's the reason why we can have peace. That's the reason why we can have joy. Because we're not going to go through these things, which is going to be called, which is God is going to bring upon this earth. And also, let me say, always remember that God is not done with Israel. They are his chosen people. Amen. And he's going to take care of those who come to faith in Jesus Christ. 
Because let me say, they got to come the same way that we came. Amen. Amen. There's no exceptions. Just because they're God's chosen people. They got to come to faith in Jesus Christ. And we know today there's a remnant of Israel out there preaching the gospel. Amen. But we know there's a lot of them out there that are not. They're still stuck in Judaism. Still waiting for the Messiah to come. But he's already claimed the first time. But he's on his way back. Amen. 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 Not to set foot on this earth, but to rapture the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. We're going to stop right there. Amen. Amen. Good job. Good job. Now, anybody, anybody want to add anything? You know, we have, we, we see thundering. We hear the thunder and the lightning. Yeah, we most definitely heard it last night. Yeah. <laughs> but it's nothing compared to what God is going to bring. It's going to be a silence and then it's going to be a rage. Yeah, know? it's just, and, and it's going to be people running for cover. Because the thing is, we, we can't even fathom. They're talking about scorpions with tails that's going to stick men. I mean, they're, gonna, they're coming out the bottom of this These things are going to be huge. And even with that sting, they can't die. They ain't going to be able to die. But they're going to be wishing they were dead. God is going to bring some awful things upon this earth that man has never seen. So the seven angels that are going to have be given the seven trumpets, mm -hmm. those are the seven angels that are going to have the seven vials. Now, the seven vials is totally different. It's totally different. Um, so you have the seven trumpets, which signifies the seven angels who's going to go on. Seven, remember that number seven just means completion. If, if I remember correctly, it looks like it's going to be the last of the seven angels who then... Open the set, last seven vials. Yes, sir. Correct. <clears throat> so, so, like, they say God's the only one that knows when all this is going to come about. At the time that those seven angels are, are given the seven trumpets, mm -hmm. would the angels know what they are carrying? Do they know what they're bringing? Yes. You're missing your... <laughs> See, the, no, they already know that God's judgment is coming. Okay. These these angels, they already know that's coming. We as Christians know it is coming. We just don't know when. So when He has these seven angels before the throne, they know what they're going to carry out. Amen. Um, the only people who may not know. Let's put it this way. The people who are in heaven, the martyrs, the ones up under the altar and all that, they know God's wrath because he told them to wait for a season. He, they know God's wrath is about to come. But the suspense is knowing how this wrath is going to come. How it's going to be pronounced upon the earth. What's going to happen here on the earth, uh, upon the earth. That's where this like, oh, God the Father is going to do something. Let me, let me ask a question. I'm going to go back um, to... Um, Chapter 6, verse 16, it says, And said to the mountains, as they said to the mountains and rocks, Fall upon us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne mm -hmm. and from the wrath of the, of, uh, of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. Now, is that kind of almost, they're, because they're giving, these, giving them a chance to make this is also around the same time. This is the, God hasn't this is the wrath yet. This is just was gonna, you know, a preview of I guess this I'm, it is. This is a this is gonna that's gonna happen during the Great Tribulation period, the last three and a half years. Jacob trouble. Jacob trouble. Yes. Okay. Remember Daniel talked about that. Yeah, uh, the um <clears throat> see these messengers, I think as Pastor said, they have the assignment. Mm -hmm. All of them have a trumpet. Uh, they, all, uh, they have their assignment, and right? they know what to do, so when they release it, just like you, you talk about one, I was another angel pastor mentioned, mm -hmm. when that angel came, we find out that he collected the prayers all the same, mm -hmm. and you go back to Revelation 6, mm -hmm. 10 and 11, mm -hmm. they had prayed, Amen. saying how long, and this is the answer that what pastor went to then. In Revelation uh, I'm looking right now, but... 8 was the answer to the prayer. Yes. I think he mentioned that uh, earlier. And I imagine, if I can imagine, I imagine that their prayer was, Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done. Yes, on earth as it is in heaven. And what the passage is referring to in chapter 6 is where it says, And when he had opened the fifth seal and saw that the altar of the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true? This is a prayer. Thou, does thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them, that thou shalt rest yet for a little season, until their fellow servants, which is the Gentiles, also, and their brethren, the Jews, that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. That's a prayer there when it's saying, God, how long? How long are you going to let these people carry on after they did this to us? And these are, those are part of the ones who answers are being, uh, prayers who have been answered in Revelation chapter 8. Any more questions? No. All right, let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, what's in heaven, hallowed be your most beautiful name. Father, we just pray that we take your word that was taught to us, Father, and just let it circumcise our heart, Father. And if there's any doubt or any question about your word, Father, we just pray that, that we pray and the Holy Spirit reveals it to us, Father, so we can get a clear understanding on what is to come. But, Father, we just praise and magnify and glorify your name that when these things come upon this earth, that your children, your church, your body will be with you. Giving you all the praises on and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.